All right, everybody. Today is September 20th, 2020. And as always, welcome back to Southeast South Dakota. I don't really have a video for this weekend. We didn't do a whole lot. We did get some more stuff ready for harvest, but it wasn't uh, anything really amounting to a whole video about. I think uh, we fixed one of the floors in our biggest grain bin and the auger is sitting out over there, which we got that out. Grandpa's gonna grease that up, get it ready uh, for corn because apparently we're gonna sell all of our soybeans. So it's just gonna be grain carts and truck all the way to the elevator. So I don't know how that's gonna go. We'll see what I can get for footage on that. But uh, it's looking like right now that it's still gonna be about two weeks till we can start. A lot of guys north of here and east of here have actually started on soybeans. Like up by Brookings, a lot of people are going right now, but our stuff still has some green spots in it. All the leaves are starting to fall off, but uh, the stems and the lower leaves are still there. So 25 mile an hour wind the whole weekend. So we haven't been able to do much and the sun hasn't really been out that much. So it's been kind of cool, but it's just been windy nonstop. And with the California fires going, the sky is quite ominous and weird. So it's supposed to get up in the eighties for the next week or so. So we'll see where that goes. Anyways, the reason I'm down here in the pasture is uh, I moved the 7800 and the grain cart down here so we could uh, park the auger up there. Grandpa has this cart ready to go. He's worked on it quite a bit. All the hydraulics are hooked up. The PTO has been flipped and ran. So that's all ready to go. Uh, I think the 7800 is ready to go as well. Like I said, the reason I'm down here today is I'm going to do a video on the transmission in our 7800 because I got a request from Northeast Ohio Farmer to uh, do a comparison video between our 19 speed power shift and their power quad transmission they have in their 7800. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so I'm sitting on our 1994 John Deere 7800 that we've had since I want to say 97 or so. It's the only tractor that's been here longer than I have. Every other tractor we have is a little bit newer. So uh, first thing you can see here is this is our 19 speed power shift. So I will demonstrate in a little bit here, but basically you got 19 forward gears and you got seven backward ones. And a power quad on these 7000 series tractors, you got two shifters. You got your range shifter, which is the one on top. You can go A range, B range, C range, or D range. And the shifter below looks like the power shift one, but you only have four forward gears and four backward ones. So you got a total of 16 forward gears, if I'm correct. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's 16 forward gears compared to our 19. So our tractor has three extra forward gears than the power quad. However, uh, power shift tends to be a little jerky, especially in the 19 speed and the 8 speed power shift models, which are back in like the 4020 days and the 40 series. But, uh, you know, besides it being a neck snapper, uh, it's not too bad of a transmission. Okay, so with this one, with a power quad, when you're going between ranges, you have to clutch and shift, say you're in A4. If you want to go to B1, you'd have to clutch it like this. You'd have to clutch, then shift the shifter up here into B, pull yourself back down to first gear, and go through the gears like that. So every time you shift ranges, you're going to have to put the clutch in. Now on the power shift, you only have to put the clutch in when you're getting ready to move and when you're getting ready to stop. So all of these gears we can just shift on the go with, which uh, gears 18 and 19 are your road gears, 17 is right below it. So these two up here are your uh, two, only two road gears you have. With the power quad, I think all of D range is your road gears. I'm not for sure on that, but I believe that's what it is. So basically all you gotta do with this one is you just push your clutch in, then you get on your shifter here. Now you just start out in about fifth, and all you do is release the clutch. That's all you have to do and you're moving so if you want to go you just tap it tap it you can even do two or three whatever you want now when you want to stop just push the clutch in go in reverse and whatever and back up and then when you want to come to a stop all the way I usually tap the brakes if I'm on a hill put it in park and you're done so that's all you got to do in a 19 speed power shift you got all your gears right here you don't have to shift ranges you don't have to clutch on the go you can just shift through all of them on the fly so I hope that kind of explained things a little bit better I'm not too good at explaining things but hopefully I cleared it up for you guys there 
If anyone was curious how uh, the power quad and the power shift vary in these 7000 series tractors, now you know. So I ho hopefully that cleared some things up for you. So I figured this video would turn out to be a little bit of a shorter one because I'm just doing a demonstration. So uh, what I plan on doing here is we can look at the corn real quick, which is not looking too bad. There's a little bit of growth there, not bad at all. The ears aren't too bad of a size. Uh, most of them are dried down. The end rows are a shorter number than the rest of the field. So the end rows are all brown and dry and the rest of the field is green. So I think what we'll end up doing is when we do start corn, we're gonna take the end rows off this field and then go to our shorter number uh, corn over at our west fields, knock those out and then come back once the uh, green is dried down. We're gonna do that this year. On my way back to Brookings, I'm gonna stop by our soybean fields, which are probably where we're gonna start harvest this year. And we can go take a look at those on the way out. So we can see kinda how far along those are and see if it'll be a week, two weeks, somewhere in that range. We'll kinda get a good idea of that. So let's head over to those fields now. Well, this would be the first field that we'd probably start combining on. As you can see here, most of the field is already dry, just starting to dry down. Not a whole lot longer, but if you look out there, there's still some green spots down in the low areas, especially down there. So we'll probably have to wait for those to dry up, but this probably be, will be the first field that we start combining on. So with that, guys, I'm gonna end this video. I know it's kind of a short one and not a whole lot has been going on this weekend, but this is all I got for you this time. Hopefully next weekend we'll have something. I don't know. We'll just have to see what uh, next weekend brings. But for now, I gotta get back to Brookings and get back into my college courses. So, with that, I'll let you guys go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you in the next video.